Welcome to the latest addition to the Compliance Podcast Network, the podcast 10 for 10, which brings you the week's top 10 compliance stories curated together in one podcast each week. Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, brings you the compliance professional stories you need to be aware of at the end of your busy week. Sit back and in 10 minutes, hear about the stories every compliance professional should be aware of. Every Saturday, 10 for 10 highlights the most important news, insights, and analysis for the compliance professional, all curated by the voice of compliance, Tom Fox. Get your weekly filling of compliance stories with 10 for 10. Hosted by Tom Fox. 10 for 10 is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from the sponsor of the Compliance Podcast Network for this month, Ethico. In the intricate world of ethics and compliance, each second is precious, and slow case closures are more than just delays, they're missed opportunities. Enter Ethico. Our solution revolutionizes case management, cutting closure times in half and turning every challenge into a chance for improvement. Imagine a workspace where efficiency and compliance coexist harmoniously. Don't just dream of faster resolutions, make it your reality. Visit ethico.com slash CPN today to book a demo and dive into our exclusive white paper by Tom Fox, the ROI of compliance, and to try our free ROI calculator. Empower your team with the tools they deserve. 10 for 10 for the week ending July 13, 2024. Our first story uh, comes to us from Reuters, who reports that TikTok, uh, or rather uh, the Department of Justice, has asked the House to give them the right to use a transcript on some of the uh, national security issues raised by TikTok and the bill requiring divestiture of TikTok, which was signed into law by the Biden administration. So it looks like uh, the DOJ will have a full-throated response uh, to the attempts of the TikTokians to prevent this law, and the clock is ticking on TikTok. Next up from the Financial Times, Polita Clark reports that in May, um, the percentage of workers who uh, were working from home dropped to 26.6%, the lowest since the pandemic, uh, but now, uh, starting in June, it went back up, and it's nearly to the amount uh, level that it was in June of 2022. What does all this mean? Well, it looks like remote work is here to stay. Certainly not full-time, and of course, there can be lots of caveats by employers, but the flexibility that this has brought employees is something that most employees literally across the globe want. They want to have the flexibility to work from home. And it's uh, turned into a real business positive, at least for employees. Whether employers wake up to smell the roses and actually care about their employees is a different story. But it looks like that remote work is here to stay. Next up from ABC News, a former Indonesian minister has been sentenced to 10 years of corruption and for agricultural minister sentenced to 10 years for corruption for uh, taking bribes in uh, the country. Uh, Indonesia, of course, is well known or I would say has a reputation around corruption and we rarely get uh, convictions out of Indonesia. So it's certainly a big deal that this would occur. Next up from the New York Times, a jury has found Archigo's founder Bill Wang guilty of fraud and racketeering. The 2021 collapse of Archigo's capital management led to some $10 billion in losses for Wall Street banks. Um, prosecutors could ask for the judge to sentence him to jail for the rest of his life. Uh, it's not clear if he's going to get that sort of draconian sentence, but all of his defenses that, hey, we're just a family shop and we weren't required to follow all the rules, maybe so, but uh, they got him for fraud. And finally, in the bars of gold defense, uh, the jury hears final arguments in the Robert Mendez case, Senator Robert Mendez. 
He says simply because the government talked about bars of gold, that's no reason to convict his client that uh, anybody can have bars of gold laying around the house, particularly if your wife is corrupt and takes those bars of gold in an attempt to influence you. Oops. Oh, well. Uh, the case is with the jury, and we will definitely report back on the verdict next week. Uh, next up, yet another story about the Department of Justice ramping up its white-collar crime through whistleblowers. The Washington reports that under a new program that's been pretty well discussed, a uh, whistleblower has a financial incentive uh, program that they can now file or will be able to shortly file under uh, in directly with the Department of Justice. This will mimic... The current program that the Securities and Exchange Commission, CFTC, and perhaps others have, it's the first time the DOJ is going to have a financial incentive program for whistleblowers. So it'll be interesting to see what results the DOJ gets out of it. Next up from the South China Morning Post, uh, China has amassed a one-half-year tiger tally record in its anti-corruption campaign. Tigers, or those accused of corruption in China, Over 36 were detained by China's anti-corruption watchdog in the first half of the year, setting a new benchmark for the president's signature ABC campaign. That is opposed to 22 for the same time next uh, last year. All of these tigers belong to a pool of officials known as centrally managed cadres, meaning they held ranks at the deputy ministerial level or above. Smaller number held slightly lower ranks but had key positions. And so... The Chinese premier's cut down of corruption continues. Uh, One of the biggest stories of the week was Boeing, who has agreed to plead guilty to a felony in a deal with the Department of Justice. Uh, Boeing was under scrutiny for the uh, door blowout and other uh, failures in the first half of 2024. This led to the Department of Justice to accusing Boeing of... um, failing to follow the strictures of the deferred prosecution agreement it had agreed to, and Boeing's now having to plead guilty. In addition, they'll have an additional $240 million-plus fine and required to spend some $455 million to upgrade their compliance program. The Department of Justice is going to require a monitor uh, to oversee the Boeing compliance program and hopefully others. So hopefully Boeing will get the message this time and move forward. This uh, guilty plea will require court approval and the victims, uh, the families of the victims of the 2737 match, Max crashes have already said they are going to oppose this. Uh, in a very interesting yet dispiriting article from the Wall Street Journal, it reports that uh, insurers have been defrauding the U.S. government to the tune of $50 billion under uh, Medicare Plan B uh, for three years. This is just unbelievable. This is Medicare Advantage Plan, and these insurers are routinely billing for services that were never delivered, diseases that were never caught, people who uh, could not have uh, many of the diseases identified, And uh, once again, it shows uh, that the federal government must be ever vigilant for insurance fraud. Uh, Literally at this level, I hope some people swing over this. There is absolutely no excuse for this level of fraud going forward. And our final story uh, is from our good friend Elon Musk, who says that the fee which uh, plaintiff's lawyers who required him to have a revote for his bonus have sought should be thrown out. Really no surprise there. The problem is they won the case, and they're entitled to a huge fee. Uh, they got some, I think, $10 million uh, overturned. So Elon Musk says the plaintiff's lawyers aren't owed any money. Good luck, Elon. Have a great weekend, everyone. Have you ever wondered how to show the ROI of your compliance program? Have you struggled with the budgeting process, getting the funds you want for your compliance program? Well, I've partnered with Ethico to put together a white paper on the ROI of compliance, which shows you not only how to demonstrate ROI, but also how to speak finance when you're sitting across from the CFO with your budget proposals. Check out the website 
and get the white paper. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of 10 for 10. I hope you will check out the newest podcast in the Compliance Podcast Network, the Compliance Tip of the Day. In Compliance Tip of the Day, I give a five to eight minute summary of one tip that you can uh, integrate into your compliance program or put together for greater compliance program efficiency.